Well, hi guys. Welcome to the Dundas Junction Model Railroad. I thought I'd do an update video and a mail call. So I've made some progress on the layout. I've got most of the cork done for the main line. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna turn the camera on eventually and give you a tour of what I've done. Um, but most of the cork is done. And uh, a few surprises, a few changes. And you'll hear in the background, I had some trains running. We'll go over that a bit later. But progress is happening. Um, I'm hoping in the new year to start laying the track. So let's turn this camera around. And so you know, I'll give you a tour of what I've done so far. And ignore the trains running in the background. We'll, we'll go over that later. So let me pause this and we'll turn it around. Okay, I'm back. So, so there is a start, the lower end of the incline on the right side of the layout. So the double main line. And so the cork is done all the way around to there. You can see. And comes around here. To the, to the lift gate. Now, so I'm about the lift gate. Uh, that you see in there in the lift gate, that is a custom built bridge I built. I couldn't, I didn't like the way the walls were fitting. So I made that out of wood. It's designed to fit the space that I had. Now the plan is in the future, to see about having that, that prototype reproduce in a 3D print and make it more, look more realistic. But right now, it's gonna function. So I also completed, you can see down the line there, the, I have the staging yard bench work finished. And I'm going to tilt the camera a bit to see it get, a, get you dizzy a bit. But that's where the, um, Staging tracks and go all the way to that wall on the far side there. So we've done that. And so we have the cork in the corner here. So most of my radius are 30 and 32. Um, some spots that have 28. But nothing less than that radius on the main line. So that's my incline that I, when I had the issue before with the double cross, the crossover. And the crossover, the replacement, it arrived in the mail on uh, Friday, yesterday, Friday. So I have that in hand, so the backup. And that's going to be, that's going to be put to use. And, uh, but it's, um, made a few changes, not major. Um, if you see the track plan on the wall there. What I'm thinking of doing, I'm gonna move the camera this way here. I'm thinking of taking out the double crossover. Let me get rid of that mirror. I'm debating about getting rid of that double crossover on the staging yard and putting in that replacement uh, crossover in its position. So now I see how the trains are gonna run. I want the trains to enter to, from one side only so I have two lines feeding in and one line exiting that's the plan anyhow that I'm considering so um, yeah so progress so January track so I'm gonna pause this I'm gonna go I'm gonna tilt it down so we can see my mail call here so let's go into the mail call Pause this. Try this out. Okay. I think I'm in the frame of the camera. So, I got all my track. So this is all Walters Code 83 track. I have eight boxes for my layout. So I got that. I also got uh, more uh, track fillers and joiners. 
uh, I got some a, a whole big pack of number 11 blades because they wear up pretty quickly and I'm working on a heritage train for my pumpkin locomotive so I've been picking up rolling stock that that have box car particular that have that are fallen flags that make up the BNSF rail railroad. So I picked up a few more of the collection. So I have a Santa Fe box car. Uh, inter, this is an Inner Mountain uh, car. I got the Inner Mountain. Then I got the Spokane, Portland, and Seattle Railroad, which is the Walters Main Line. I got that one. This one here is Rapido, and this is Northern Pacific uh, box car. And of course, you gotta have the Burlington Route. Um, so that's a Bowser uh, box car. And of course, you need a, a Burlington Northern. And this is an uh, Athern Roundhouse. These are all box cars, so I try to keep it consistent. And from the previous purchase, I got a Great Northern Repeatle uh, box car and the Frisco 40 foot box car, which is Repeatle too. So that's the rolling stock that will go in between my 25th anniversary uh, scale trains uh, locomotive and my special edition uh, box car and caboose that I got from Train World. I also got these are uh, modern wood crossings with re railer ends. These are brand new that came out from Walters. Now, the reason I know about this stuff here uh, last year at Springfield. Our good friend Heath did a tour of the place and he was showing these on his video when he was at the, uh, the train show and I took a screen capture of the video and I found out about this stuff and I ordered this right after Heath's uh, video went live. So I shout out for Heath for showing me that so that these will be painted up and go into the track. But that's Walter's brand new item came up. You gotta give Keith uh, credit for that. And um, that's it for the layout. But now uh, something else I want to turn the camera around. Okay, I'm back. So what you're seeing here, this is my N scale collection. I don't have a lot of it. But the inner loop is DCC and sound. The outer loop is DC only. This train has been running now here for over a half an hour. They're, wonder, they're running 100% on an 18 volt Ryobi battery. They're not plugged into any kind of power source other than that battery pack, which is over there in that spot right there. I'm, we're going to go over this uh, tomorrow night on our live uh, at 7 o'clock. But this is strictly, this is totally battery. It has, it ain't plugged into the wall whatsoever. I, the battery was fully charged this, this morning. And it's a Ryobi inverter. I got the two power transformers plugged in the tension cord. And the tension cord is plugged into the, the inverter. That's it. So technically, this is totally, totally portable. Take anywhere. Somewhere on here. You can run, make some noise. But yeah, this, 100% battery, that's it, no other, I cut the cord to hook it up temporarily, but 
NCE 2 amp system, Cato uh, DC drive drive pack. That's it. I believe this is an Atlas uh, locomotive, and that one there is a Bach one. And that's that's all is running these two trains. And um, yeah, so that's it. That couldn't ask for a more simplified portable power trains. So if we have a power failure, I'm going to test it eventually on my, my 5 amp system. I technically, I can power my entire layout with this inverter. I know how to power my internet. I did that last year. We had a power failure. This is a good uh, backup power for your house. 18 volt battery. Simple. And look at trains running. But that, that's my THB N scale. So, I, so everybody can realize I do have N scale. Of course, it's hard for me to see the details of an N scale. Uh, but I do have it. It's a nice end term right now because you see it fits in this space here. So you, you can tell the difference of the, of the size of the layout when you have N scale versus HO. I hate to imagine it, G scale or O scale. But yeah, um, that's where he is on the layout. Um, I hope the um, come January, start the track. And go from there. So I'm going to take you over and give you a few more details of the uh, bridge. And lower it down. So the, the bridge is it's just plywood. Uh, quarter inch Baltic birch on the base. Uh, the sides are eighth inch Baltic birch. I just primed it. But my issue I had, the space I had here is 16 inch between here and there. And my track center is two and a half inches. Of course, can be glued to the glued to the top. And I had to put some bracing under the lift gate because this eight this eighth inch ply was flexing too much. But that's it. Here's the Walters uh, version that I did. I didn't want to press with the Walters kit. It was gonna fit the space, but I didn't like it. So hopefully we can 3D print something that's gonna fit the space better and make it more realistic. Right now it's just wood with strips that, that I cut up. But that's the size I want to fit that space. But I want to make it a bit longer. Well, I got a friend of mine coming over to this week to see about what we can do for 3, 3D printing this uh, bridge. But I think we can do something about that. So let me uh, turn this camera around. So hang on a bit, guys. We're back in a bit. Okay, I'm back. So that's the progress I've done so far. I don't think you can see me very well in here. Turn this around a bit better. That's the progress I've done so far with the layer. Um, I haven't done the core, I haven't done anything with the stage, the main yard yet. That's gonna wait till, that'll be the last thing I do. I've only done the entry points to get to, this, to the yard, to each end, that's as far as I've done. And cause I'm using a, a Wi-Fi interface, I think I'm about changing where I put switch machines too, cause I like the idea of doing operations and I want I can go around and manually change the switches with uh, ground throws because I can walk around my wireless TCS uh, uh, UWT 50s I got a pair of those things I can go anywhere I want this layout and run them so I think I like that idea pretty good and uh, but my staging track you can't see it from here but I'll turn the camera around and you can see the other side. Okay, I'm back. So if you look over here, 
this is where the staging track is going to enter. Right at this uh, curve crossover. It's going to travel all the way around there to the, uh, the bridge. So that's a really nice long track. So I can have two 10 foot long trains on the staging track and merge into one and run the layout for running trains and still have operational with the um, the main yard. Also too, if you notice there, I have the hole cut up for the, um, the turntable. And you can see the track, I haven't finished it yet, but you can see the track, this is gonna lead the inner of the turnout is going to go into the turntable, and the other one's just tricky. A branch line is going to sit for maybe some injury down the corner here. But yeah, um, that's it. Just reminder: uh, so while we're on the topic of shows, tomorrow, 7 p.m. on my channel, we'll do a live. Thursday at 7 p.m. on Mike's channel, we're going to do a pre-Christmas show before Go Via Go Home show starts at 8 o'clock. So me and Mike are going to do the same we did last year, see what kind of trouble we can get into there. And that's tomorrow. So tomorrow night at 7 and Thursday at 7. So hope to catch you uh, guys later. Uh, and we'll see where we go. So we'll talk more about this, this setup here tomorrow on the live. We'll have it running. Any questions we have tomorrow, we can talk about it. But this is um, simple. Okay, guys. So thanks for uh, tuning in. I want to thank all my subscribers. Um, and we'll move forward. This is the Dundas Junction Model Railroad. Out until next time, guys. Appreciate all your all the viewers. Have a great day. Chat later, boys.